Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break. Today we want to talk about how you can ensure that your business is sales tax compliant. A lot of people shy away from sales tax. It's a complex topic. We want to dive into this a little bit more today. With me on the show, I have Matthew Kappel. He is a former tax jar engineer and now co-founder of BreezyFile.com. He brings a lot of experience in the sales tax space. And after tax jar was acquired by Stripe, he launched BreezyFile to serve Shopify merchants with sales tax filings. So let's dive right into it. Hi, Matt. How are you today? Great. How are you? I'm very well. Great to have you on the show. But Thanks let's assume me. let's assume I'm a new seller on e-commerce on Shopify, or I'm a seller from Europe looking into the opportunity to sell my products in the United States. What would you tell me about the basics of the US sales tax systems in e-commerce? Cool. Yeah. So it um, the basics are there's really three things that you need to do in order to be compliant or that you need to have, I guess, in order to be compliant. The first is um, you need to kind of determine where you need to collect. So in which state, so in the U.S., it's going to be, um, there are there are 46 states that have sales tax and you have to decide or figure out for your company in which states do you have what's called nexus. So nexus is like the um, the onus to register and then begin collecting and remitting tax in those states. And so you have you essentially have a big enough business presence in that state that they want you to collect tax. So um, long ago, uh, back in 1992, there was a Supreme Court ruling that basically stated that if you have physical presence in a state, so if you have an employee, if you have a warehouse, if you have a storefront, that is a big enough business presence for you to then have to go to the state and register uh, to get your sales tax license and then begin collecting and remitting um, on whatever frequency they they tell you. So once you register, they'll tell you, hey, you need to uh, give us back the sales tax dollars every year, every month, every quarter, depending on how large you are. So if you're a bigger seller, they'll tell you, you know, every month. If you're a smaller merchant in that state, they'll say maybe once a year. Um, and that's how it was for a long time. Then... Uh, a few years ago, there was a, a Supreme Court case that basically said, hey, um, now with the internet being uh, so pervasive, we want to make sure that um, states are um, still having that revenue come in so they can pay for their you know, essentials that they, they have, roads, um, schools, firefighters, that kind of thing. Um, and so they said, hey, if you have a big, big enough business presence as far as um, actual sales into the state, then we're going to say that you need to begin collecting. So there, uh, they, the Supreme Court basically said that each state is allowed to set a threshold where if a seller crosses that threshold, um, which is usually X dollars of, of um, revenue in a certain time frame or um, Y amount of transactions, so individual transactions. So if you sell to 100 different people in the state in a year, um, then that's a big enough business presence. So you need to register with the state. So um, now there's basically two ways. So if you have a physical presence or if you sell enough product into or enough of your service into a state, then you need to collect. Um, and that kind of um, was a little crazy for a while. Luckily, there's been a lot of um, great places that built some good technology that makes it a lot easier for you now. Um, and so the, the first thing, again, is where do I need to collect um, and remit? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, okay, now I need to figure out how much I need to collect when I ship to those states. So um, the idea is if you have Nexus in a state, when you ship to that state, that's when you need to collect. So if you ship anywhere else where you don't have Nexus in the United States, so if, if I don't have Nexus in um, New York and I ship to New York, I don't need to collect tax. But if I have Nexus in California and I ship to California, then I need to collect. But what rate do I need to collect? So luckily, um, again, there's lots of great technologies out there now. There's There's at least four or five now that I know of that have APIs that you can hook into and they will... Um, basically do all that for you once you hook it up. Um, so they'll they'll look at everything and they'll in real time give the proper tax calculation to your customer and then um, collect and then you know then your checkout process will collect the proper tax, give it to you and you hold on to it until it's time to remit. So um, that's the second thing really. And then the third thing is okay, now I have all this tax money, how do I file? So ideally you have some sort of reporting system that will allow you to, you know, have nice generated reports that tell you, okay, well, here's what you've collected. And in an ideal world, it's close to like a, you can just go to the state's website, copy paste your report in, and you could file. Or if you want a more um, hands-off solution, there's lots of places out there like Breezy File, which is my company now, that will just file it for you on your behalf. So 
Um, if you don't want to go through that process every month or every quarter of actually having to file in five, 10 states or whatever, um, there are plenty of services out there now that will will help you with that. Um, so those are the kind of the three things, like where do I need to collect? How do I collect? And then how do I remit the money? Okay. Very good overview. Still, I'm already puzzled because if I'm on Shopify, um, obviously I just want to sell my product. I don't want to become a sales tech expert. Mm -hmm. um, how does Shopify with helping with set up your product and being compliant in all states where you have Nexus or not? Yeah, so Shopify, so I kind of have a, an interesting business where Shopify does a great job of doing all, all this for you. So they have something now that they released at the beginning to middle of last year called Shopify Tax, where um, they will allow you to just basically turn on their tax calculations um, pretty much for the whole world. Um, so it's not just the U.S. They, my company's focused on the U.S., but they will allow you to do this in, throughout the world. Um, and you select which countries or which in the U.S., uh, in the case of the U.S., which states you need to collect. So then when you ship to those locations, they will automatically calculate it for you. They take into account some of the more complex things I haven't talked about, like product taxability. So sometimes, um, let's say you're selling clothing, which a lot of states will consider like an essential item and they don't want to tax you uh, for having to buy something that you just need to live. Um, so Shopify does a good job of having a, a wide product category range where you can go in, categorize your products, and then they'll take that into consideration when they're making the calculation. So they'll, they'll basically do it all for you. You do have a little bit of setup you have to do um, with selecting your states um, and selecting what type of products you're selling. But then you should be good to go from there on the calculation side as far as how to actually remit um, that money to the state and file. They do build reports for you, which are pretty good. Um, so you could go ahead and, and do that on your own in the tax settings, um, which is just under like the taxes and duties section of the Shopify store. Um, there's just a little report that says like sales tax uh, collection report and you click in and then they'll give you um reports for each of the locations that you've got set up and you can uh, filter based on the date range that you need for your um, system. So it does help with all that. Um, they just don't actually do that last step of actually filing it for you. So you actually still have to go in and file it. Um, one thing that I kind of glossed over is they also do track your economic nexus um, threshold. So I kind of mentioned that there's kind of two different ways that you could trigger nexus or that onus to then collect. Um, they don't track the physical portion of like, hey, do you have an employee in this state? Do you have a warehouse in this right. state or something like that? So that's still kind of on you to know where your inventory and where your people are and you need to register in those states. Um, but they do keep track of all your sales and where you ship to. Um, and they'll they'll notify you like, hey, you're at an 80% of one of these thresholds in the state. You might want to start watching. Uh, you might cross that threshold soon and then they'll notify you again when you actually do cross. Um, so they do, they do a really good job with their product. They just don't help with the filing portion of it. And that's where I, or a business like me would come in. And that's what I'm trying to do for folks. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Now I'm a European, I'm from Germany. I'm always puzzled when I'm in the US that you see a price and then there is federal tax, there's state tax, then there's whatever on top of it. And then you go to the checkout and you're surprised how expensive things are becoming actually. How can you, or how do you file these different taxes? Um, in the U.S. for our non-U.S. listeners? How does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, each, so, so there actually is no federal sales tax rate. Um, so as far as federal level, don't worry so much about that. There, there's other taxes like in, business taxes, income taxes, things like that that you'll have to pay. But as far as like the checkout process and when um, like a like a value added tax or like a transactional tax, um, what it does, there is like a, a different or a, a combined rate that will usually be displayed. So usually the customer will see like, hey, you owe 8%. Cool. Um, it is frustrating to get that tax added on at the end because most of the places in the world have that, that, you know, that tax included in the price. But um, just know that that 8%, kind of like you alluded to, isn't just like one rate. It's a bunch of combined rates. So a state will usually have a state rate. Um, and so like the state of California will say, hey, we want 6.25% of all transactions uh, taxes to come to us. And they disperse that how they see fit for their state. But then if you ship into a specific county um, or a district or um, a specific city, the city might decide, hey, we want to buy, uh, pay for better roads. So we're going to temporarily increase sales tax for 10 years. And we're going to add another 1% on top of that and add that in. 
Um, so part of that 8% is like, hey, there's another 1% for the county and another 0.75% for the, uh, the city because they do that uh, different things that voters will vote on um, to add, you know, so most of the time these are things that voters have voted on to say, yeah, we want that additional tax for whatever purpose. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's baseball stadiums or football stadiums or something like that. Um, and so if there is a breakdown like that. Now the hard part is, okay, now where do I send that money? Because you don't, you can't, you do send it all to the state, but you have to denote in your filings in most cases, like, all right, so, you know, $600 goes to the state. And then I also sold into this city, this city, this city, this city, and I owe $50 to this city, $25 to this city, $10 to this city. Um, so it gets pretty complex. And so that's why that reporting part that I talked about uh, that Shopify offers is really nice because Shopify will break all that down for you. Um, they build a report um, that just kind of explains like, all right, and it, it, like it's, it kind of looks like a big CSV um, or like a big Excel sheet. Um, where it says, all right, here's a state tax. Here's how much you collected. Here's how much was taxable. Here's how much was exempt, all that kind of stuff. Then it goes down to the next row and it says, all right, here's the city tax. What city is it? Oh, it's Los Angeles. Uh, it's Santa Monica. The next one is, you know, San Francisco. And it kind of tells you all the different, uh, dollars amounts that you collected, how many gross sales you had. Cause sometimes states ask for all those different things, not just how much tax did you collect? Um, so luckily Shopify breaks that all down for you. So there are, you know, there aren't a whole lot of e-commerce platforms like Shopify that actually give you something that nice. Um, a lot of the other platforms do offer calculations because they partner with somebody um, like Taxstar, where I used to work, or Avalara, which is another really big sales tax compliance company. And, and they'll provide you the calculations, but they don't do anything with reporting or filing. So that's where Shopify is pretty nice, where they actually give you a report that is mostly ready to file. Um, so that's kind of nice. So as far as the breakdown goes, most consumers don't really understand that like the 8% gets broken down into smaller portions. Um, but on the back end, that really is happening where like small portions of that 8% go off to different places. And you as a business owner need to know like where that needs to go in many cases, because a lot of the times the state will ask, you know, where does this money go? Um, there are some states that are really nice and easy where you just say like, hey, I collect this much tax and they'll deal with it. Um, but a lot of the states, you do need that granular detail. Um, so that is part of the process as a merchant. But again, it sounds complex. It sounds a little crazy, but there's lots of tools out there that'll help you. You know, you could you could build out pivot tables and things like that in Excel if you wanted to do it on your own. No. Um, it'll, it'll be a little bit onerous, but you could do it. Um, but yeah, that's why I love Shopify because Shopify really gives you the tools you need to succeed here. Yeah, I, I think it's a good thing that Shopify takes a little bit of the pressure off um, from version. Specifically, if you're a, a founder, a solopreneur, a side hustler, just coming to the world of business, that just might scare you completely off this complexity because obviously you want to focus all of your work on selling your products and not becoming a tax consultant. So what's the process and how do you help with that um, in setting up the right structure in the filing that it's um, coming in at the right point in time and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I like to walk um, all of the customers that we have like through this in our initial call, like, Hey, here's all the things you have to do. And I, I've been offering this to anybody who, who has like, I'm just trying to get like the, my name out there and trying to help people. So I'll tell anybody, anybody is listening. Um, happy to jump on a call, you know, talk to you for free consultation, whatever you want to call it. Like I'll walk you through everything. You don't need to use my service. That's fine. Maybe you recommend me to the next person. Awesome. Like no pressure. And I'll walk you through all these things. We can go through your business specifically and we can talk about how to get this set up for you um, because everybody's a little bit different on what you need to do. Um, but more or less, like all you need to do is A, identify where you need to collect and then change your Shopify settings. Um, mm -hmm after you've registered. So I guess I should say, you need to identify where you need to collect, and then you need to go through the registration process, which is a little bit of paperwork. There are lots of places out there that can help you register. We have a partner that can help you register if you don't want to do it. If it's, you know, I'd rather pay a hundred bucks to have somebody do it for me, great. There are places out there that can do that. I don't offer that, but I know people that do, and I can point you that direction. But more or less, you just go to the state's website and it'll they'll say like, hey, sign up for a, uh, sales tax license. And then you go through their process. They make it pretty simple. You do need some detail, like maybe your EIN, maybe it's your social security number. If you're a U.S. citizen, um, something along those lines that identify who the business owner is, uh, but more or less, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, and then we'll register within a few days. Usually the state will send you um, notification about, Hey, you've successfully registered. Here's your license. They'll, they'll send you the actual license itself, which is a piece of paper that they'll email or send it to you. Um, in the mail, 
And then um, from there, they'll say, we expect you to file monthly or quarterly or annually. So they'll let you know how frequently you need to file. And then they'll say, um, your first due date is this day. And so they'll let you know. And so like, what I just tell my customers is just send me that paperwork. I'll take a look through it, send you back like, hey, here's what they're telling you. You need to file this often. Um, I'm starting on this day. And then you go from there. So it's pretty straightforward. As you get bigger, it can get kind of annoying because you might start crossing those economic thresholds that we talked about. If you start right. selling $100,000 to several different states or $200,000 to all these different states, it might happen all like all at once really quickly where you have to register for 25 states you know, in a year and then start collecting and setting it all up, um, which can get pretty crazy on other platforms. Sh again, Shopify, is, the reason I'm there is because they offer a lot of this already. And so it's really easy to have these conversations and say, hey, it sounds crazy. But it's actually pretty simple. Here's what you do. Shopify makes it pretty easy for you. Okay. I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate. I think a lot of merchants um, are trying to fly under the radar, specifically if they do some China dropshipping or dropshipping from abroad in the US. Mm -hmm. What's the worst case scenario? Um, mm -hmm. When IRS is not happy with you, what can yeah. happen? <laughs> yeah. So the worst case scenario is penalty, like late fees and penalties on top of owing back taxes. So um, what happens is usually you'll, you'll get slapped with like a late when they when they discover that you you know need to be compliant and you haven't been. They'll say, hey, we've noticed that you haven't done this. We're going to ask you to start doing this. We need you to file. They might say a random number. They might just give you like a $15,000. They'll just say it out there based on like what their average is of like, well, we expect the business is probably about this. Um, the reality is that what you, um, then what you need to do is you actually like go back through all the sales you've had since the date that they told you, like we expected you to be compliant from 2020 on, right? So for the last three and a half years, you have to go back, look at all of your sales that you've had into that state. And then you have to figure out how much you should have collected in each of those situations add all that up, you owe all of that money back to the state, and then you owe them penalties and interest. So the penalties usually is like a $50 late fee. So usually the penalty isn't that crazy. The interest might be, depending on how large of a volume you have. Um, and if you're four years you know, out of compliance and um, you're a large seller, they can get kind of high. Um, but so, so if you are a larger seller and you're selling hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of dollars, I, I always tell them, just be compliant. It sounds, you know, kind of frustrating, but there are softwares out there. It, if it's, assuming your margins are okay and you're making profit on this, like you could pay for for this and take it off your hands and you know not worry about it. Um, but if you if you are compliant, yeah, you might get slapped with thousands of dollars in fees and everything. Most of the folks I'm talking to who are worried about these things are smaller sellers, and so um, let's say you might have a, a warehouse in Ohio and you're, you most of your sales are in Florida or something like that, but you have a, a random warehouse in a state that it's just central in the United States and it's easier to ship from there, but you didn't register in Ohio, but you don't have many sales in Ohio, you know, going back three years, four years, you might have only had $200 in sales there because the bulk of your sales are somewhere else. Right. Um, and so the fees and, and, and whatnot are going to be relatively small. Um, so what I tell people is it's something that you're going to have to weigh out, right? Is like, is it worth it for me to be compliant um, based on what the penalties and interests might be if I'm not compliant? Um, because the letter, like I always tell people, the letter of the law is you should be registering in these places. Right. But in reality, like how much is it going to be a problem for you to be compliant versus not compliant? Like if you... If, is it a lot easier for you to just not do anything about it? And then three years down the line, they, the state says, hey, you should have been compliant and it costs you 80 bucks or something like that. Like, you know, that's a decision that you have to make. As a tax professional, I'm always like, just be compliant. But, you know, but also I tell you, but that's the reality of like, it might not be that crazy for you to be hit with some late fees and, and whatnot. But if you, if I had a seller that was larger, kind of like you described, drop shipping from China, millions of dollars worth of product, I would tell them you're going to want to be compliant. It's not worth the headache. Like you're going to want the, just pay a, a, you know, a, thousand, a few thousand bucks for a software service to do this for you rather than paying a hundred thousand dollars later. Because um, the big problem there is that you're not collecting the tax on these millions of dollars in transactions. And that's where you really get slapped with the, the penalties and interest is thousands of transactions that you've had that you didn't collect tax that now it's on you to pay that money. 
Yeah, no, I think that's a very good recommendation. Uh, being a business owner for 25 years myself, um, to just try to be compliant, you just sleep so much better. And specifically, e-commerce businesses, dropshipping business, the margins are very small, and they're basically cash flow driven businesses most of the time. So if you get a huge bill after three years from a revenue service, you probably don't have the savings. And then yeah, it be that's, that's, that's the end of your business. So you'd rather be compliant. Who's your perfect customer? Are there specific industries or niches that you work more with? Yeah, my perfect customer is someone that's selling on Shopify and perhaps any of the marketplace facilitators. So there are, um, after the that Supreme Court ruling that I talked about, that kind of changed the internet taxation in the United States. Um, there have been some advances in some of these places like Amazon, Walmart, eBay, Etsy. The, you know, the um, states have said, hey, you basically are helping these people sell their product by um, storing inventory, shipping it out for them, by um, being their payment processor. Um, so you're basically like kind of part of this business. And so what we want you to do is Amazon, please collect on behalf of your customers. So mm -hmm. um, if you're selling on Shopify where it's still your job to collect or any of those marketplaces, well, they'll do it for you. That's my perfect customer because I'm only worrying about like Shopify merchants and the tax that you need to collect on Shopify. Um, so that's the kind of the niche that I'm going for um, are any size sellers, small, medium, large, uh, that are m their main platform is Shopify and their secondary sales or, or any of their other channels that they sell on if they're multi-channel would be Amazon, Etsy, Walmart, eBay, those types of places that um, do the collection for you. And then, um, it, then it's on, on me to take all that information from all your business and then file on your behalf. Mm -hmm. How does your pricing structure work? How do you charge your clients? Um, pretty transparent, pretty straightforward, just $75 per filing. So we don't, again, like all this, like kind of consultation, helping you get set up, all that kind of stuff. I just offer and just say, Hey, like, let me help you get set up and running. Great. And then my goal is just to file for you. So, uh, and keep you happy, not worry about your filings and everything. Cause Ideally, that's all you need on Shopify is someone to file for you, right? Help you get set up, then file for you. And then if you need to register or whatever, I'll help you get up and running and I'll charge for any of that stuff. I just, all I care about is, can I keep doing your filings for you? Mm -hmm. Before we come to the end of our coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, um, not so much. I, I, we got we got through all the sales tax stuff. I think that's... Um, really the main part of what I want to talk about uh, is just, hey, don't let this be a thing that stops you from um, starting your your business. I've talked to many people that say, hey, this is kind of a scary thing. I'm kind of I'm thinking about starting a, a business, but I don't want to deal with the tax side of it. Um, and I guess my like, because there's a lot of a lot of the other players in the market, which again, they're great products and everything. But long ago, they there was like fear-based marketing where it's like if you don't do this you're gonna be in big trouble and you're gonna owe hundreds of thousands of dollars which we did kind of just talk about right um but in general those are for like mostly massive companies right uh millions and dollars in sales and whatnot states in general are very helpful they want you to do business like they want you to register uh sorry to begin your own business start selling things because that's good for them too it's a kind of mm -hmm. supposed to be a symbiotic relationship and i think most people view it as like a, they're coming after me kind of thing and like while that's kind of true to a certain extent like i get that it's more of like a, they want to help you be compliant and they want to help your business so um you can call them and ask them questions they're not going to be like oh uh, you started a business and you haven't registered they're just going to say Hey, okay, yeah, you've started a business, you need to register, here's how you do it. And they want to help you do it. And, um, you know, there's like voluntary disclosures and things like that, where like, they'll cut, they'll help you out if you realize two years down the line, uh, that you weren't compliant, they'll cut, they'll cut your breaks and stuff. If it's, if it's you that's coming to them and saying like, Hey, I just realized I should have been compliant. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's my big thing is like, don't let it slow you down. Don't let it stop you. There's plenty of other services like mine um, that are out there that can help you with this. There's lots of great information out there now that like maybe wasn't available six, seven years ago um, to help you do it. So don't let it stop you. Go do your thing. Um, you know, start your business, get it going. Um, and you can figure it out as you go. And Shopify really is for me, like the place to go. If, if sales tax is on like your, your list of worries, Shopify is a great place for that. Um, and then the, all the other places that I mentioned too, Amazon, Etsy, Walmart, eBay, they all offer these kinds of services as well. Um, and you don't even have to do the filing in those. So start selling in those channels if this is really the thing that's slowing you down. Because I've talked to too many people that haven't done it simply because of sales tax. I know I talk to sales people about sales tax. So 
I probably get more of that than the reality. But if you are one of those people, just go do it. Um, you know, call me, whatever, uh, and I can walk you through it again. Worry free, hassle free. You don't need to like sign up for my service or anything. I'm just trying to help people. Um, I used to, I was a support, like a customer facing engineer for a long time at Techstar. So this is the kind of stuff that I just like doing. Um, so, you know, don't worry about sales tax too much. There's plenty of op opportunities out there to make it pretty hassle free for you at this point. Yeah. I think the things have become better. I, I started my first startup in 2001, a SaaS business back in the time. And it was just a headache to find someone who would understand what we're doing. And when I started with Shopify seven, eight years ago or something like that, it was also very difficult. Um, and as you said, things have become much, much easier. There's experts like you around now that really understand what e-commerce is, how Shopify works and how you do your tax filings the right way. So I would highly recommend our listeners to reach out to you. Where can people find out more about you? Yeah, so our website is breezyfile.com. Um, so you can find us there. Um, we have a, a page that I'm working on building out with uh, different resources. So all this information, I'm kind of writing up in like little short form blog posts or um, just little resources pages that you could find. Um, so that's breezyfile.com. Uh, my email is matt at breezyfile.com. Shoot me an email. Um, we can set up a you know 30 minute call. I can run through all the things we just talked about specific to your business and kind of help you like where I think you should be compliant. Um, and then it's up to you from there. Go do your thing. Again, if you want to use my service, great. If you don't, no problem. Um, I'm just trying to help people and get my, I think that like eventually if I help enough people, people will probably come back to me uh, if they decide they don't want to do it anymore. So um, that's my theory anyway. We'll see how it plays out. So far it's working for me. So Cool. I would put the links in the show notes and you just want click away. And I'm sure a lot of people will reach out, out to you and just get a first introduction and you can see how you can help them. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Klaus. Appreciate you having me on. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.